Customer discovery is really, really important, whether you're at the starting stage of your startup or whether you've got product market fit and you're growing. Really all marketing is about understanding what people want and then giving it to them and packaging it in a way that they can understand and say, oh my, I really need that. So talking to your customers and really understanding who they are as people, what their days are like, and all the aspects of customer development is really important. I recommend for customer development that you should be talking to your potential customers before you even build the product. So before you get your business card, before you build your website, anything like that, you need to go out to strangers, and I do mean strangers, um, that fit the profile of the people you think are going to buy or use your product and find out what problem that they have in their life that you could solve. And until you get people saying, oh, I've got this problem, it's so such a big problem that I will pay somebody or I'll use a website to solve this problem, don't build. So customer development is really, really important before, before you even start to ensure that you're building something that people want. Some people think that customer development just happens at the beginning. So either when you're identifying what problem you're solving or what the solution is. But really customer development should happen at every part of your marketing funnel and as your business grows. So whether it's when you're trying to find customers and you're looking at which channels you might use, um, going back to the customers and actually talking to them, you know, putting in front of them Google ads that you, you wanna test or Facebook creative is one way that you could get customer feedback at that stage to getting customer feedback once you do the onboarding. So they are now a customer, they've got your emails and such. Give that customer a call and find out how that made them feel. Like, how, what were their pain points that you were solving in that specific part in their life cycle? All the way to if you, you now have a successful product, you've got a segment that's working really great and customers love it, but you're expanding to a new segment or you want to expand your product offering, go back to what problem are you solving for that specific customer segment or what problem will this new product solve? So it's, it's, you should always be doing it, and I encourage founders to always get out there at least once a week, once every two weeks, and look your customer in the eye, see the whites of their eyeballs, and really understand what they feel like, how they feel about your product, and how this fits with their life, whether it's their work life or their home life. Another thing that I suggest when people are doing customer development is not to do online surveys. And it seems like, well, but I can get 100 responses or 1,000 responses with online surveys. This, that's got to be good. Well, the problem with online surveys is, well, A, you're probably distributing it through your network, so it's people who already know you, and B, people lie. People are nice, especially here in Canada, um, well, other, where, other places in the world as well. But you know, when they hear that somebody is doing a project and there's this idea, it's very easy for them to say, oh yes, I'd use that. Oh yes, I'd pay for that, you know, online. But they're not like looking you in the face. So it's very easy to be nice and lie and say, yeah, I'd use that. Or yeah, I'd pay a hundred bucks for it. When really, when push comes to shove, if you went back to those people after, if you captured their email addresses, you're gonna start hearing the excuses as to why they wouldn't purchase your item. And by that time, you perhaps have built it. So it's better to do in-person interviews. And if your customers or users are not physically within your city, you can do Skype interviews or other sort of online FaceTime interviews, or worst comes to worst, you do a telephone interview. But you really want to be able to like look them in the eyeballs and, and say, it's okay if you hate it. Um, you know, I really need to understand this. Your feedback is more valuable than your validation that you love me and my product. There's a startup that we mentored um, through the Startup Next program, and they're now called Furnisher. And they were still trying to find product market fit, and they were um, architects, interior designers by trade, and they thought that they would first create custom furniture for people who are looking to furnish their homes. So they built the website, they started to try and get clients, and they realized at that point that people weren't willing to pay the high fees for a custom piece of furniture. So they had to pivot. They lost 
I'm, I'm not sure how many months in that point. They pivot it to, all right, let's have preset furniture um, and it be online and people will want to buy it. So I tasked them with the job of actually talking to people who might buy the furniture. I said, if they weren't buying from you, where would they be buying from? And they said, well, they're probably buying from Ikea. You know, it's not as good quality, but it's, you know, it, it's passable from a design perspective. So, you know, it's probably Ikea. I said, great, go to Ikea and interview customers. They said, well, we can't do that. We can't go into Ikea and interview customers. I said, no, well, you could, and you could get kicked out and, you know, they're not gonna charge you with trespassing. Or you could stand outside of Ikea and just ask people as they come out or as they come in, can I just talk to you for two minutes? I'm working on a project and I need your opinion on furniture. And so they did that and they got some great insights around people didn't want that um, sort of cognitive load of trying to figure out what goes with what and what will fit into my space. So the insight there was that this company could create a whole package for the customer. So it's a package of the, everything from a throw rug to the pillows, to the couch, to the lighting, everything, so that it's easy for this bachelor guy to just go on the website, say my, my living room is 400 square feet and I like these colors and this design, bang, furniture comes to them. And they found that by actually asking those guys who were going into Ikea. And had they not done that, they could have, you know, gone another way, but um, right now they're, they are growing their business with that concept of sort of room in a box.